Six days of pure magic, human design rave festival 2024. Hello, hello, and welcome to Therese. Hello, Veronica. <laughs> hello, Julia. <laughs> so nice to see you here online and to get Yay. the chance to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, welcome to the Human Design Ray Festival uh, 2024 from the 17th to the 22nd of January, live in Sofia and online worldwide. And uh, we're super happy to present you um, one of our speakers, Therese, and her topic is a little bit different. So um, I will keep the suspense a little bit and we first talk about her. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, it's a spicy topic. Yeah. So... Uh, Therese, um, you actually um, are one of the first uh, wave of um, uh, enthusiasts, human design enthusiasts, who was uh, really impacted directly by the source. And you also had the chance to um, to know Ra also in like everyday life. So... Um, it's amazing uh, how um, actually there are people who know about human design and even uh, do readings and are super popular in the world and they don't even know who Rauruhu is. So it's really special uh, actually that um, some people had the possibility to be impacted directly by him. We call them the first wave of teachers. And um, this is what we want to do, do with the festival, to make a bridge between um, the original Rauru frequency and um, how he brought the knowledge to the world. And then he impacted the first wave of people who resonated to that. And then they were the ones to disseminate the knowledge even further. Uh, and um, Julia and I could then pick up and, uh, you know, be the second wave of um, enthusiasts and professionals who even further disseminate the knowledge. And this is actually, if you think about it, it's such a perfect 5-1 example because 5-1 is not here for the people you know. It's for the people who are, you impact on a very broad social um like scale and this is what Raul who did and um yeah people don't even know the source but the knowledge is there and the people have been impacted by it and we invited you because uh, you know him um from different perspectives but you're also a five one and a projector and um yeah can you tell us um, something more, maybe like how it all started? How yeah, well, thank you very really much for um, also this honor to, to call me the first wave. For me, I would even say the first wave of the originals, so the founders, you know, every company, every, um, yeah, a system, whatever you, you put into the world has has founding fathers and mothers. So I was not amongst them. They were the 90s. Yeah, so they were the early years. I was there in the early 2000s. So <laughs> I even have people where I'm like, oh, wow, well, you were there before when it was like really small. Uh, but I moved to Ibiza in 1998 and uh, didn't immediately meet Ra. I had a small child raising it, um, but then it went to the international school there, my son, uh, Marcello, and I had uh, met other people. I had a partner then um, because it didn't go well with the father of my son. Uh, it was all before human design. And then through my new partner, who was 20 years older than me, Daniel, um, he knew Ra. He knew all the people in the north of the island who where it all started. So I was introduced in that community 
and then also introduced to Ra. Uh, was in his house, so I didn't know even then how uh, big it would be one day. It was already on the rise. It was not like in the nineties where it's a bunch of it was a bunch of people. And then my son went to the same school, or actually Ra's two sons went to the same international school. So I could also see Ra on the parking as a father, picking up his sons every day. And um, in those days, I was really scared of manifestors. <laughs> because the first impression Ra in his environment, where all these not self people were, of course, lovely people, also party people, but especially in this international school, it was the people who really, well, did what they did, and Rod wasn't very friendly. He closed down, walked through the parking, just talked to a few people, his friends, but it's like, wow, this, yeah, that's what a manifesto is like, and don't approach him if he's not open to um, talk to people. But then I was also invited to work for Jovian, uh, to be in the customer support, and um, and then later also to be in the studio when he did recordings. We had weekly uh, human design TV, or there was videos we could receive. It was the early days of the internet also. <laughs> I mean, not the very, very early, but not everybody. Oh, I, I remember we had this big computer PC at home and this first Apple, like a little cubicle. <laughs> and so... And I was always announcing it because um, also as a five one, I got also lots of projections. I'm like, okay, so you are a pretty one. It was like uh, 20 years ago <laughs> and just announcing uh, the radio and um, in between saying, and now there's an interview. There was Iñaki Morasa always interviewing people and Mel Britain who hosted the radio also with the music and so it was so exciting to be also in the studio and to come once a week and to say my little text and sit with Ra in um, in Aura and get him then to know from a completely different side. He was so funny. He was so entertaining. Sometimes he came in with a joke. He laughed about his own joke so hard. It was almost rolling on the floor. So this was when he was in his space where... Uh, he could do his stuff and um, also got a um, lot of photos now from then from those days um, also because I'm now back in Vienna and I meet Ilse Sendler also who has the Austrian human design school here and she met Ra even before so he's really the first wave like Linda Stone or Peter Schober that's really the early early people or Mary Ann Vinegar who was also then in Ibiza and who I got to know as the generator doing her stuff. So it was people already in the process when I, I met them. And so she had this bunch of photos also from Steven Rebolido, who was also first wave uh, in America. And I'm selecting pictures also from that to show a bit how it was to sit in class with Ra. There was the other side I saw of him there were the annual Ibiza events. And these events were once a year at Easter, where people came from all over the world to meet in Aura and, of course, to hear Ra speaking. But when I look at these photos now, I'm like, I mean, there were like 30, max 40, maybe sometimes 50 people. I mean, how many people would come today <laughs> if the new Ra was, <laughs> would sit there and 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 teach or then speak and mix also. It was in a hotel and in between. And there it's the bridge to, to the festival, which is in January um, that you organize to be in aura with people. Of course, it's not Ra himself anymore, sadly, as he passed away in 2011, but it's still the same um, aura to aura connection that the impact or this absorb absorbing information that you can only get in aura from people. Yeah, so online is great. So whoever can join online, yes, that's the other option if you can't come in person. 
But if you can meet anyone who is really knowledgeable, who has been in the experiment, I mean, I would say seven years is, is always the first round of deconditioning, especially as a projector. And then uh, the second round, you only notice how much you have been conditioned. <laughs> And then you you go again, uh, same topics, but it's it's not a circle. It's more like a spiral. So you can see already in a different way. But um, even in the early years, when I was really new in human design, the early 2000s, the impact you get or also sitting with other people in the breaks for dinner, talking to them, it's it's such so valuable and uh, we all don't know how long we can still travel yeah is this forever is it will it be limited there are wars there is stuff out there then 2027 we don't know so i would really take every chance and i would come personally if i wasn't in uh, south africa yeah, i'm leaving soon so next time for sure <laughs> i will um, organize in a different way uh, to to meet people in Aura and I hope it establishes itself now this festival as a regular thing because that's what was happening every year as long as Ra was alive and this, I know in America there are meetings there are festivals or there are conferences whatever they call it but we also here in Europe and we need something like that and I hope everybody will take the chance who can somehow with work. I know it's not always easy to to get away, but uh, yeah, hopefully in you know, authority or strategy <laughs> it gets people to 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 meet in aura. Yeah, so that's that's my first yeah. take. I I don't know. I got to be carried away. You can see I'm still so like, oh my god, that's so fantastic to have that and to have had that. Yeah, but this brings us exactly to your um, offering to the festival. And um, I really like it because um, human design is such a vast um, knowledge and um, it's about living it. Still, it can be so interesting to the mind. And um, Rao Ruhu is not alive anymore and he even said it when he was alive look what happens when i die and it it really happened and is happening more and more but uh, it's really valuable um people will be curious i think to to find out more about ra as a person and you're bringing this super interesting and valuable your perspective your own personal perspective and uh will share with us um uh some photographs uh so that people really meet the person and the teacher and um yeah so it's that's your offering and it, it's very valuable um i think and it will be very interesting uh, to to hear more about that and about those times yeah, yeah. I actually have a question mm -hmm. the actual question because Teresa you're also as a projector and also as the one that's quite involved in the in the community in your own unique way um how do you see the difference between human design being transmitted by people who who got it through the through the actual aura yeah through the source and those like us who are a uh, second wave who are learning from the people who studied for, with Ra. Do, do, do you sense or do you observe the, the difference? And if yes, then what is it? Well, first of all, it's time. <laughs> so people who have uh, who knew Ra personally, he died in 2011. So even those who met him maybe in 2010, have been in the experiments then if if they were like really starting in those days at least 13 years so you're probably all finishing now the second round of deconditioning and even uh, of course there are probably 
around who have been in their experiment longer but never met Ra. So maybe that's also a different story. But basically, I would say it's time. Yeah. So the second round and the third round, you always notice a difference with people who live it, not just, oh, I had a reading like 10 years ago. Oh, now I start only realizing um, I, I, I should maybe <laughs> go back again. It's really starting the experiment. So that's one thing. And then um, everyone who I ever met who had been around and got the chance to meet Ra is, um, yeah, there is something from deep inside that is this impact of a manifester where you can't help it. Yeah, so something got through you into your cellular level from somebody who was not just this human Alan Krakauer, who's um, <laughs> you know your name, uh, is original person. But what has happened, or what happened to him in uh, 1987? You could feel it that this person was carrying something, and what went through him. Of course, he as himself, who who went through that experience, um, was uh, this person already because when I lived in Ibiza I knew the people who knew him before and he was always an um, outstanding figure but before he had this encounter he was just another hippie freak more or less <laughs> a very special one people loved his stories he was a teacher in a school and the pupils just adored him so he always had this gift of talking uh, with an effect that everybody was like, wow. Yeah, so there was him also, a clarion. Um, but through what had happened and where I could see this no choice, um, that he had to spread the message as long as he could. Um, and when you got that, you felt like, okay, cool, something is happening on a deep cellular level. Yeah, and I've, it's almost like, uh, you recognize people, okay, you were there, you had this, and then you're like, wow, wasn't that great? Shouldn't everybody get that chance? Well, we can only pass it on if we can. Um, so maybe that's this thing. But it's also important that it doesn't get into a cult. Yeah, or people not like, okay, worshiping somebody who was there. And But as a fifth line, and that's so, so funny also, this side can't be avoided either with certain people projecting exactly that even into a dead person. Yeah, so this whole bunch of what was really so special and um, people had the privilege to, to be there, um, it will always be present. But on, at the same time, also putting the message in the foreground and saying, it's it's not, let's not have a cult around it. Let's get information and um, whoever has the chance to talk to people who met Ra before. I mean, you said, Julia, you met somebody on your travels, somebody who was around in Ibiza. And to just also see how funny it is when Ra started uh, with, um, after the encounter, writing down the first words in this cafe, actually, of my, my former boyfriend um, I had in Ibiza and, and people gave him food because he didn't even bet he had no job then or anything and how he couldn't help writing that down um, yeah so I don't know I got lost now what that I wanted to say yeah it was uh, important that it's just the other people around him who are still like is this another story of him now is this another thing he's telling us um but they were also willing to be the first pupils then to try it out, to have their handmade um, charts, even with errors. Yeah, so my ex-boyfriend who had a chart drawn by Ra, and when the software came out, then it turned out to be wrong. There was one gate missing, so it didn't have the G that uh, it was first. <laughs> Uh, in the first drawing, but then of course Ra gave him generously, laughingly uh, another reading, and it was funny. Explained a lot. So even that happened in those days. Yeah. So we hopefully won't get back to that one day when there is no internet, where we need to see: can we still draw 
um, body graphs? Could we still do it? Where who has the ephemeris, these books of transits, and who could draw that? Uh, get all the calculations right. <laughs> so yeah, those were these days, and it was very different for the people who had that. But it's still valuable now. So like teachers like you. Um, who learned from somebody who knew that it's the message is still the same. So I think that's also very important. As long as you stay with that. And uh, yeah, we have this nowadays that there are lots of new schools or self, whatever, announced people who say, oh, I know it. It's like, I got it also. I, I know better. But I don't want to get into that. <laughs> it's just a different story. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if this answered your questions. What was special or what's the difference? It's hard to tell. Um, for somebody... Maybe there is this humbleness also I sense in people who met Ra or, or humbleness towards the man because, and really adoration because, as you say, Ra is like also self made. He was like really. Um, he had hardships at some point in his life. And then um, the system came through him, which was even detrimental to his health and uh, maybe later uh, added to why his life finished so soon. But um, the people who knew Ra, mm -hmm. in a way you can see that they're humble about it because they're... Mm. they see how the whole thing evolved and it's so different we see it now and as you say it's so sad that some people are <laughs> making um, you know their living without even uh, mentioning the source um, yeah it's a little bit sad but it is what it is and um, one of the things this festival brings is exactly that um, the original uh, frequency, Rao Ruhu frequency, disseminating it throughout the world. And some people who met human design didn't even know there was an international school. And you really study for three years to become an analyst because, uh, come on, it's not just like that. Um, it's a lot of studying involved and also experimenting yourself, because if you don't, then that's everything else is useless. Um, so yeah, the festival's idea is exactly that, like people like you can reach, uh, that we're a platform of, of to, um, disseminate the knowledge even further in its original frequency, because, um, yeah, that's, that's the USP, I would say the unique selling point, hopefully, <laughs> yeah. It's really a privilege to have that exactly and to know we we keep it and uh, it's not like sorry to interrupt but what you say is I just confirm that that uh, it's not like uh, oh now like 30 40 years later it needs an update upgrade or update because it's old no this was knowledge from the future this was knowledge that has already everything in it and it's okay it was transmitted by a man who was a manifester and a person of his own time but he got it on a cellular level impacted in a one week encounter which drained all the fluids from his body the people who saw him afterwards were like they were so surprised he was not dead because he looked like dead he really saw something happen it was not just oh I write the story now or I have some ideas about it. Oh, oh. So it was really a physical impact. And of course, everybody translates in their own limited way, but I'm sure went beyond every limitation. And you can say it in everybody like me as a projector or the generators who were impacted by Ra will always translate or uh, transmit through their own person, through their own design, through their own seeing. But it can't be like, oh, now I got it. It's five types, actually, or stuff like that. Like, really? Or when people in forums or in, in, in Facebook groups, like, he was so not self. Because 
how would he even die before old and all that? I'm like, hello, how old was he when he met it? His whole lifestyle, it was not meant for him to live forever, but to survive that long enough, that could have been his end anyways. Uh, so all these judgments, but then it's also funny almost because as a five one, you will get that. Yeah, so you can't stop that either, I guess. The people will always have their own projections or want to be important themselves as long as they're still conditioning. It will always be like, yeah, yeah, you uh, yeah, didn't get it all or mm, look at him and how he lived. And, oh God, yeah. <laughs> so what can you do? <laughs> yeah. I call them the human design police sometimes, you know, like the, that judgmental way of like, you're not living your design or somebody's not living. Who knows? I mean, that's what human design is about. It's like you are the only person who sees through those eyes and feels through the this cognition. So, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Our auto authority, when it's finally there, it's not about judging others. It's just seeing from our little position on the big wheel where we were incarnated to speak from there, and even Ra said that, he said when he introduced variables, it was, I think, in the last one, 2009, 2010, I don't know which one, uh, it was still in Ibiza, not in, in Canada, when he said, more or less, I've, I've given all, it all, and now variables is the thing, it's almost like the new types, um, and I <laughs> said he hoped to live to the day when everybody, well, there were 40 people around and said, you go out and you teach now and, and um, I have given you all I have, more or less. Um, he spoke, it was a bit sad also, he could sense hmm, what, what, what will happen. Um, one day, hopefully, I will be witness to everyone from their own position on the big wheel and I'm only there in my own still, yeah? With this clarion and this sun and this earth and these variables to share mine and you will from all the perspectives all around the wheel and then only then we'll have the whole picture. So his own humbleness. Yeah. So I wished everybody would would know that and not be like, ah, oh, I know so much better because even he didn't do that. So like, but then you can't change people. Well, that's also another thing just to accept and we do our best to keep that alive which includes as you said beautifully the humbleness and it came from Ra himself but you also so, touch on a very big topic because some people perceive human design as a cult and that we have this guru talking about Ra Uruhu and the, that's the humbleness I'm talking about the people who really met Ra and it's again what he says about the five one profile himself. He says, you would be surprised that they're not this demonic personality. And um, uh, yeah, that how can this be a cult when the man himself never and he always was like um, being away from Leave me alone. Like I'm not a guru. Don't put pictures of me yeah. anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, this is about your authority. It's not about me or the knowledge itself, because knowledge is not power. It's about returning your own authority to yourself. Because, yeah, that's why we're lone wolves in a way, because it's about being you, really yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. So it's not cult, guys, and we don't have a guru. If we have a guru, then the guru is called myself <laughs> <But life. laughs> yeah 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 that's that's the message we hopefully can get across also because i know you can't help people wishing for somebody who they can adore and worship out outside of themselves and then they make up something if the real person isn't there and especially a five one you can never really know you can also have projections that maybe resemble some of, of what the person is and then in, within his own design but other stuff for sure will not meet it and i feel like also especially people who so wish they would have known ra and then they would be special that's how they think it would be which is the contrary 
I mean, especially in the way like, look at me, I got some of that. Now I, I, I can tell you something. No, it's not. It's not that. It's the opposite. And to also send that out and spread that, please, yeah, don't go there. Go, don't fall into the trap. You have to either make yourself more important because you thought what would it be like if I had met Rat? Wouldn't he be so have been so pleased with me? Or I don't know. The weirdest stories come come out. Or I would have talked to him eye to eye. Or these people like yeah, yeah, that's okay, live with it. But there is always the uh, other side of the coin when you have this specialness and how would I be special? Then also feel like. But he didn't do this or he didn't do that. So there's the other side of the cult of the worshipping to have to say something where you can criticize. And like, why do you need that at all? Why can't you just get the message to live yourself according to your own inner authority and your strategy? What do you need to get the message? Yeah. <laughs> and it's non-judgmental. It's like, and don't take things personal, even if other people behave like that. So I'm also like, okay, I don't take it personally. People project on me the this and the that because that's a fifth line always. Um, but just to observe it is, I can't help sometimes being like, oh, please, yeah, come on. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Who does that help now? Well, uh, nobody erased gate 18 uh, from the body graph, so... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> some people just have these traits and they are about everything and um you know mm -hmm. what sometimes i think i feel or i observe that it's just it just comes out yeah <laughs> it's just uh, this judgmental stuff it just comes out and um our role is 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 to keep doing what we are doing if if we ourselves got the experience first of all because it's about experience when when these words that we receive from the system become an experience and yeah and then and then that's what truly matters and for me it's the biggest it's the biggest discrepancy between this wow what we are doing is literally we just receive words sentences that's it but it's so much more than that because it penetrates into the into the cellular or genetic level and and that that's is awakening is when is to be able to live that and just as you were saying about your ex partner yeah, that uh, he got a he got not exactly correct reading and and when he got the, the correct one, it just made so much more sense. And and that's truly is. Sometimes we're trying to fit ourselves in the ideas and they might work. They might be okay, but it's not going to be like it. Huh? When you get it, it's like, okay, full activation. Yeah. In that case of my yeah. ex-partner, like he was... Uh... Uh, he is uh, still uh, happy and and <laughs> and traveling. Um, and MG manifesting generator, emotional jack of all trades. So he was too busy anyway to <laughs> give too much about his his chart. Then um, I mean the type was correct, the emotional authority was correct. So by responding and by waiting, everything would have been said, and the profile at two four is also correct. Um, but the big difference was one gate ten gate ten. Um, the, he had in the original drawing, which would have uh, defined his G, and I have this big G as a G projector, all gates, but uh, apart from gate thirteen in my G two channels, and he was so, yeah, drawn to my G, and it didn't make sense as long as he had this defined G only when. The correct chart was out and there was an undefined G. So this connection thing was like, oh my God, that's why. Yeah. So also made it so difficult to, to separate again. And uh, that that's this thing where like, oh, okay, fortunately it didn't change type or authority, but it changed one big thing and you could see the difference. And it made this uh, for him also probably to understand why this this need for more neediness. I was 
for my my G was there, which often happens with definition and and un, undefined. Uh, mm -hmm. Center. And Therese, you are a G projector, and that's like one of the very rare authorities. Um, could you tell us how you feel it uh, in your body? Um, I mean, looking back, I can say that I felt it before I knew that it was my inner authority. Um, and I always felt it with certain people which I could not explain before human design. With some people, there was almost like a tingling in the air. I was uplifted. It was like bright lights in the room. Um, and in hindsight, I can see this was when people saw me as close as they can with the five one and at least recognized uh, my who I am as a G projector with my all my love gates and uh, almost all direction gates. And they came into the room and there was this uplifting here. It is this knowing, ah, that's something special. And with other people, I felt immediately deprived. So in those days before knowing and being able now to connect to my inner authority, I was completely depending on the others and I could sense the difference. So I was with people and then before human design also not aware that it's it's they project something or they can't just see and don't want to see who I'm there only interested in what they project on me like for looks or for some entertainment factor I don't know not for somebody who, who needs to be seen and, and invited I mean nobody knew yeah I can't blame anybody but um, the more I got into my experiment, the more I could also consciously connect with this inner light. For me, it's a light. Yeah. So maybe because I have so many gates there, but it's also a pull towards something. It's like, as Ra said, hummingbirds. We can follow um, something, our own trajectory without invitation, if it's only for ourselves and there's a pull. Yeah, so it's not like every authority is different. You feel it in the body, everybody does. Hopefully, or can get to that. Um, but for a G projector, it's really like light. And I thought thought then, before human design, it's normal. That with some people, everybody has it. Oh, click on, and there's light and brightness and and, and space and everything and love and um it's not. I mean, I'm also on the cross of healing through love. So it's my special cross. So that's also really important to grow, to observe oneself growing into our special incarnation cross, which takes time when we first wear our costume of our profile and follow our strategy and in authority to grow into this cross. I never knew what healing in my sense means Yeah, when I first heard it. I thought I have to learn techniques to put my hands on people or I don't know, medical or whatever it is. And it turned out for me, it is human design. It is my way of healing. Um, people are helping to be that person who can, from my own uh, perspective and my own experience, pass on something that hopefully empowers because I have individual uh, definition through my sharing and I also have collective channels uh, leading into a better future 31 7 also and 8 1 and my sense making um, but I didn't feel it then what it would be and now only you can see that's how it unfolded I couldn't have planned it yeah so that's also this and that's really how my G is expressing itself through my cross also. So I think, I mean, I talk to, I've, I've, lots of G projectors come to me uh, for the readings and I ask them also, how is it for you? And some say it's more like a, a magnetic feeling or uh, also some say brightness, but it's it depends also on your, your definition. We can never be tribal. So G projectors do never have a tribal um, as a channel. Because everything below the G is is undefined, so can only be collective or individual or both. Yeah, 
And it's a lot of light in my case. And the light gets brighter the longer I'm in my experiment. <laughs> mm, like a true projector. <laughs> Shining. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amazing. Well, yeah. this brings us to a sweet end. <laughs> so have been in the process who... Oh. No, so that's that's the sweet end of I wouldn't be where I am now in these last 20 years where I have had the privilege to meet people. It was not only the teaching, which is so valuable, and some people don't have the chance. They have to learn online. They have to get the material. And it's the best thing they can do, and you never know where one day they will end up or uh, also be able to travel. But if you can really really meet people in aura who have have had more experience or the same and even in groups of like-minded people all together in the experiments that's already something yeah so i wouldn't be where i am now without these people who started before i was who um, could meet and still can meet regularly and learn in aura experiment together and meet each other as who we really are. As yes, you learn it in every immersion, in, in every um, retreat, whatever people organize, and uh, festival, you know, that's festive. So something really needs to to happen uh, to, and that's also, I think, in Europe, to meet in aura and you speak to a projector, knowing it's a projector, even at the very beginning, where we say, okay, it still has to grow into it, but it goes so much faster or deeper if the others already talk to you as a projector and you can meet them. Oh, you're the generator. I ask you the questions. Do you have time? I'm not just blah, 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 blah at you. So just learning it by, by living it. And that's the chance we'll get when there is something. So thank you so much for organizing it. I find it so great. And I hope it's something that can be established and happen regularly. And people know they can always get the chance up on a plane and come. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we really yeah. love doing it. And um, there is so much positive feedback. So we are confident that um, it's the right thing to do, <laughs> although mm -hmm. it can be challenging sometimes. So um... I cannot even imagine what that must mean for you to organize to to uh, reach out to have all that um the work there's work to do yeah that's not something that happens by itself and i uh, you have my deep respect for that this nice generation you. um yeah. dance you do with each other mm -hmm. that's great yeah, we we also have uh, uh, more people on the crew, actually, that stay behind the screen. Maybe a good moment to acknowledge them. We also have a producer, manifesting generator, Julia, and and the whole team of people who support with uh, many, many, many different things. So it's really an organism, uh, probably OC16 at this point, and... Uh, Looks like it's growing and some people are joining the team and uh, yeah. And we're really grateful for that because without you guys, we wouldn't um, succeed in doing and really bringing this to life because the festival is already happening. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and this interview is part of it. So thank you so much for your time and um letting us touch uh, to um, your individuality and uh, your uniqueness on the table of abundance that we're trying to create here. I'm very happy to be part of that and uh, really prepare well as a first line also on the design side to <laughs> hopefully, yeah, my, my little contribution in the bigger thing. And yeah, root for you guys. That uh, it's like a real big thing. It um, I means I know it's the first year in that sense, but that's a basis. It's a foundation. 
what's happening here. Thank you also for, for inviting me for that talk. <laughs> And guys, you expect surprises from Therese. You're going to see pictures of Ra you've never seen. So it's going to be opening a little bit the curtain uh, behind. So do you want to join and be there? We would love to have you. Feel invited, informed, and initiated. Thank you for being with us. And bye for now. I can only support that. I have no final channel, but support it. And I hope to see you. Thank you. Bye for now. Thank you. Yay. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. Get your tickets today. See you soon.